Okay, everybody, I'll uh, get the meeting underway. Can I thank you for coming along tonight to the event tonight in this very nice evening in the, in, in Wellbank. Uh, the meeting has been organised by Yes Scotland. Uh, my name's Doug Muir. I live locally in the area, and I'm one of uh, many people, a growing body of people who are working actively to secure a Yes vote in uh, September. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to give you the arguments and support of a positive yes vote in September and also give you the opportunity to ask questions and the bulk of this evening's meeting will be devoted to questions from you that you have to the two speakers uh, either side of me. So hold your questions and the bulk of the meeting will be occupied with questions and answers and I'm sure you get plenty of questions and hopefully you'll get plenty of good answers. <laughs> some of you will be here utterly convinced in the yes vote, some of you will be here uh, thinking you're going to vote no and I'm sure a lot of you are, are undecided and have good questions to ask so that's as I say what the bulk of the meeting will be about. First of all it's lovely to uh, be here, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first because uh, most of you won't come across me pro predominantly because I'm not a politician. Uh, I do a number of things, uh, mostly I'm a mother, but I'm also a wife and I'm involved in uh, various businesses. First of all, uh, in my introduction earlier, I'm the Managing Director for Business for Scotland. Business for Scotland was set up to in provide informed choices for business owners about the whole debate, particularly around the economic space. We're not politically aligned in any way, most of our members are apolitical. And frankly, sorry Stuart, but we felt that the debate was just too important to be left to politicians. We also noticed that uh, business tends not to be fairly represented in what we hear in the news, mostly in what's called the mainstream media. If you listen to that and we have these kind of things, business says, often they're saying large multinational conglomerates are saying, and they bear little relation to what we understand in business. And we came up here this evening, uh, my husband's from Brechin, and I was thinking, well, what's a typical business in Brechin? The likes of Ted Rahoney in the kind of high street, he's been there forever doing picture framing. 99.3% of our businesses are what's called in the SME or small medium enterprise sector, which 98.3% of them are small. That's zero to 49 employees. That's a massive wodge in our kind of high street and it's, you don't hear those voices. So that's exactly where we try and fit. We started in uh, around May, formally launched in May 2013. We've got nearly, it may have passed 2,000 just the other day, and we're growing all the time. Uh, groups, we've got a group in Dundee, Aberdeen, Inverness, Stirling, Perth, uh, the Borders, Fife, Edinburgh, Glasgow, just all over Scotland. So that's business for Scotland. Myself, uh, why did I get involved? What on earth possessed me to stand up and, and speak about this, having sort of no political background? I describe myself as always politically aware and never politically active. I suppose even as a child, I found I was slightly contrary. People would say something to me that it was an absolute, and I kind of always wanted to question it. And when I was young, my father was quite keen. He had procured a job for me as a trainee clerkess. And uh, I auditioned in secret in Glasgow for what was then the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama because I was quite appalled that the extent of his <coughs> ambition for me was being a trainee clerkess, whereas I quite frankly saw myself, okay, not in stature, but I'm an altogether bigger fish. So I did do that audition and I did go off and do that. And that, that kind of typified a behaviour that I've had all the way through my life, which is when people say, ah, well this, I go, no, no, I'm not going to accept that belief. And that was one of the primary reasons why I thought, no, I need to stand up here. Because I remember growing up being told, unbelievably, that we were too wee, too poor, and too stupid. Absolutely unbelievable. And I absolutely refuted that as a youngster, and now, but with the possession of the knowledge we have around the economic case, Scotland is a wealthy country. Let no one tell you otherwise. But of course, we're not a wealthy society. One in nine of our Scottish children live in what's judged to be extreme poverty by Oxfam. 
One in nine, it's quite incredible. One in five of our children live in just your average commoner gardener poverty. Frankly, when did I sign up to that? When did I personally sign up to having such dangerous weapons of mass destruction so close to the city that I grew up in? I certainly didn't sign up to that. When did I personally sign up to the idea that the vote I cast in general elections would count for little or nothing? And you hear these kind of stories around the best of both worlds. Frankly, from a business perspective, that is utter rubbish. We have the worst of all possible worlds. The reason being that the Scottish Parliament, despite being very successful with the very limited powers it has, it still only has a very limited influence over the tax take and economic policy of Scotland. 7% going up to roughly about 15% with the full implementation of the Scotland Act next year. We in Business for Scotland did a calculation based on the kind of rate, the burn rate, if you like, of devolution to date, and worked out at the current rate of devolution it would take a further 170 years for Scotland to have full fiscal autonomy. Who here can wait a further 170 years to say, no, we choose not to allow our children to live at that level of poverty? I'm certainly not waiting that length of time. So it's absolutely the heart of this debate about choices. As I chose in my life to say push back, no, my ambition for myself is much, much more. Equally so, my ambition for my country is much, much more. And that's become almost that kind of dirty word. We don't talk about ambition. Scotland's had a disproportionate impact in the world stage. And we've kind of been allowed ourselves to forget that over recent years. I think we should all be massively ambitious. And if that ambition means that it's people should have employment, that we should, we, we should take our place even more so in the world stage and some of the things we do brilliantly, education for example, or simply that we are able to live in peace with our neighbours, then that's a fantastic ambition as well. So I say to you, when it comes to that all-important date, make the choice for yourself, but more importantly for your children and for your grandchildren as well. As Stuart said, it's the normal state of a country. And I would go further and say it's actually a moral imperative. If we want to change the way our society is, the way our wealth's distributed, the way the opportunities are, we need to make the choice and not hand over that choice to somebody else. So we can make the right choice. For me, the right choice is fundamentally about voting yes. Thank you.